Good teams are not built overnight. It takes a guiding hand to teach and encourage. It takes support, experience, a star player or two doesn't go amiss. In Tinseltown, celebrity goes a long way after all. Loving it. No, teams are not built overnight. Everyone starts somewhere. To find your greatness, you've got to reach for it. In a sevens team, every man counts, not least when you're playing tournaments in back-to-back -back weekends. In February 2020, Los Angeles served as the first instalment of a men-only North American leg of the World Series that would also take in Vancouver. No, these teams were not built overnight, but their medal will be tested on the HSBC World Rugby 7 Series. Los Angeles, the city of angels, and it loves to put on a show. But could the series be facing an early curtain call in 2020? Okay, good morning, everybody. We'll get going. It's seven o'clock. Um, welcome to the manager meeting for uh, Los Angeles. Hopefully the information I've been sending you over the last few weeks with all these contingencies and challenges that have been going on have clarified things for you. So as you know, Singapore and Hong Kong has been moved from April to October. And that's where we'll do the awards. Uh, so it won't be in Paris uh, this year. I think it's disappointing, but we understand. We know there's, there's an outbreak out there, and I think we need to be, to, to, to be careful as well as players, as a rugby fraternity. In February, the tour began to deal with the first effects of the coronavirus pandemic, and no one could have guessed quite what was around the corner. Perhaps better then to look back. Previously on the HSBC World Rugby 7 Series, it was business as usual in Sydney for the women as New Zealand won a fourth consecutive tournament title, racking up 33 against Canada in their final. By contrast, the men's competition featured a new name in top spot, albeit one that has done it all before. Reigning series champions Fiji had previously by their standards, underperformed in Dubai, Cape Town and Hamilton, so victory tasted all the sweeter for them in Sydney. First place for Fiji, third for the USA. Victory in the bronze medal game courtesy of Perry Baker's 199th career try. The stage set for him to score his 200th back home. And I remember just joking around in the locker room saying, I don't want to get 200 tries here. I don't want to get it here. I'd rather have it in LA, but where my family and friends would be at. Had Perry written his own script, he couldn't have asked for a better place to go to 200. But this story comes with a twist. Another player on 199 career tries, compatriot and friend, Carlin Isles. Carl is a great dude, man. I mean, he's been a best friend, a brother, since the day I met him, actually. A real stand-up guy, down to earth. Carl is always there and willing to give a helping hand. And uh, he's a character to himself, man. Uh, he's just a great guy, and I, I wouldn't want another roommate, you know? And I just, I'm glad that we're really close like we are. Teammates since 2014, the pair have been integral to the success of USA Rugby in recent years. Shot! As has the man leading them, Long-time coach, Mike Friday. I'll be nine, Dan. He was the first to start believing us, to make us believe in ourselves, you know, and that's when everything started happening for us. Take contact, take contact. Mike's a great guy. Character at times. I'll play, I'll play, I'll play, I'll play. Oh, oh man, let me tell you about Mike Friday. He's a little feisty, he's a little feisty one. Fire, fire! Good boy, go hard boys, work him. Work the fire. But he's funny. <laughs> you know, what you doing? <laughs> you know, he looks after us, he, he fights for us. He's the type he will fight for you. You know, if you're in his circle, you're good in his circle, he will do anything for you. And that's the type of coach you need. And not only that, he allows us to be us. He allows me to be me. 
There's a lot of different personalities on the team. We come from everywhere, but he understands us individually. Hi, Mom. I've been a lot, a lot of coaches, and he's, he's a one-of-a-kind coach, and you know, he's changed our whole atmosphere. He changes as men. He fought for us as men, and that's somebody that you want to go to bat for. I'll go to bat for him any day, any day, any day. That's it, boy. Don't wait for him. Win that space. Win the ball. Don't wait for him, boy. Come on, ball. Come on, ball. You love me. You love me. Far from being part of the staple diet of sport in an American household, rugby, thanks to the likes of Baker, Isles and Friday, is growing in the US and when the Seven Series comes to town, it's a good opportunity to engage with its future stars. It's about inspiring people and you know, changing people's life, even if it's just one person. And I'm able to do that doing rugby and that's something I always wanted to do all my life was to inspire people and I'm thankful rugby allowed me to, to do that and to be able to go out there and see the different kids and show them that, you know, there's not just football or basketball or baseball out there, there's also rugby. You know, rugby is a, it's a different outlet and it's a great outlet and it's able to allow you to, you know, reach a dream that you also can make a difference in the world and you can also, you know, become an Olympian and also you can, you know, travel the world and meet great people. You know, just, just give, that, give that light and give to people. World Rugby does that at each of the stops and there's always a community outreach and a grassroots outreach to get the game and the, the players out in the communities whenever there's a, an event and the goal is to not just have a tournament for the sake of just competition, is to leave legacy and leave some growth to the game. 2028 is here, it's a, it's a natural build up into the Olympics being in LA and the, the venue that we're playing this tournament at is the exact same venue that the Olympics will be held at. So Southern California is athlete rich, marketing rich, so we know that a good team performing well in this city and in this geographic area can only help the game. And I think what we will see, the true growth, will be a lot of these players that have come up underneath this coaching staff that has developed this team to get these performances are, are going to take on coaching roles and administrative roles and you'll have Americans replicating what non-Americans have been doing at that level and, and that will help the game as well. The success of the Sevens team in the United States has is, is already paid immense dividends to the awareness of the game and the exposure of the game and we just hope come uh, Tokyo that the, the real dividend will come in, in a great performance there. As we know, Sevens can be fickle but they can win gold just as easy as any of the top three or four teams on any given weekend, so. On any given weekend in the HSBC World Series, 16 teams vie for that gold medal. Thus far this season, New Zealand have won gold twice in Cape Town and Hamilton and topped the standings as a result. Traditional sevens powerhouse, South Africa sit in second, but in third, France. The Bleu have never finished top six in 20 seasons of the series. The chance of bucking that trend looked promising in early 2020. England have never won the title, but have finished as runners up on four occasions. Coming into the LA tournament, they sat fourth on 54 points. The USA are sixth and the America's other two representatives, Argentina and Canada, sit in eighth and tenth respectively. And next week, Canada gets to play host. Ireland qualified for the series last year. In their first season on the main tour, they sit in ninth. And a decade after winning the seven series, Sir Gordon Titch and Samoa sit in 13th spot. Only four teams have ever won the title. Samoa, New Zealand, South Africa, and of course, Fiji. The reigning champions started the season slow, but are gathering momentum, having won in Sydney and spirits are high. For us, you know, when uh, we are happy, when Fijian boys are happy, Fijian players are happy. We tend to do things properly. And as you can hear, you can see us uh, laughing at uh, everything that is sometimes, some things, sometimes it's funny, sometimes it's not, but uh, 
you just laugh. So in Fiji, we are really close together. It's all about uh, family, it's all about, you know, everyone, everyone in the team. You know, we love each other so much. That is why, uh, as you can see, the bond of our team is uh, so unique. And, uh, and these young boys you know, tend to show up when we need them the most. And uh, we always said to each other that uh, obedience is uh, better than sacrifice. And that is where everyone showed up in, uh, in Sydney. Coach always told us that uh, you know, the Fijians are coming. So in Los Angeles, we told each other that uh, you know, Fijians are coming. Fiji were confident, in form, and had a point to prove. You forgive any team for not wanting to face them first up, least of all, Korea. It was the Invitational side's first appearance on the tour this season, and Fiji made short work of them in the South California sunshine. It was the prequel to the main event, the crowd waited for the USA. USA! USA! The crowd waited to see which of the two superstars would reach 200 tries first. And coach Mike Friday tipped the balance in one player's favor. You know, here we are, you know, Perry and I both at 199, and you know, we're in our locker room, and you know, coach says, you know, Perry's starting. Next up, for the first time this weekend, the USA. Carl and Isles will start the game from the bench, presenting Perry Baker with an opportunity to potentially be the first American to score 200 series tries. Whoever starts or who doesn't, I mean, there's a reason. I know what my coaches, you know, they know what's best for each and one of us. And, you know, Perry gets on, you know, I for surely thought he was gonna get 200 first. And I was all for him. Okay, we are off and moving here, the USA v Samoa. At the break, here in Los Angeles, it is a tight game. The USA and Samoa locked at 12. Halftime come, and he didn't get it. I got on. OK, Perry Baker has had his chance, says Coach Mike Friday, to hit 200 tries. Now it's Carlin's turn. It's like the tuck team into the old Legion of Zoom. I got the ball first time, and I score. Hughes gets it to Isles. Isles, Isles to the outside. Carlin Isles, there he goes for try number 200. Sea fly gets it done for the USA. Oh man, I did it. <laughs> it was it was all it was cool. It was a lot of love, a lot of fun, but at the end of the day, I honestly wanted Carlin to reach that 200 first, just because of the hard work he put in, just the way he paved the way for crossover athletes like myself. And uh, it's just an honor just to be up there with him and be mentioned to have 200 when he hits 200. So I had the opportunity to hit 200 before him, but. I didn't execute my job very well, so I was really pleased when Carla actually got on and got the chance to hit 200. And to have that underneath my belt shows a lot, not only to my teammates, but to myself, and just the love for my game for rugby. Just I'm able to show my gift, and you know, having that landmark, it's, uh, it's amazing. Support comes in all shapes and sizes. And as the USA took the field for their second game of the weekend, it appeared they could count on it from some old friends, themselves familiar with the fanatical American support. Um, 
so go USA. Against Scotland, the USA ran in five tries, but the crowd was kept waiting until the last minute for the one it really wanted. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I had the opportunity to get on the pitch, and um, instead of trying to force things, I just let it come to me. Baker's got it. I'm running down the sideline. That's where my family was, and that's where my my friends were. They was all on that side. So it's pretty sweet to do it in front of them on that sideline. You know? It just felt good to be able to do it, you know? And like I said, to be out there with Colin Owls. I always dreamed of being the best at whatever I, do, whatever I chose to do. I always dreamed of being the best, and I always want to put my best foot forward. And it just goes to show that stay focused, head down, and you can achieve whatever you want to achieve. It just feels good now to step back and look back and see what I've accomplished in the time that I've been here. And it's, it's pretty sweet, and it's a blessing. No man has recorded more tries in the history of the Seven Series than England's Dan Norton. Against New Zealand in the Pool D finale, he scored his 354. It was also his 90th tournament, a milestone he shared in LA with the New Zealand Goliath, Tim Mickelson. Both closing in on the appearance record held by the man sat coaching England from the sideline. James Rodwell's 93 tournament caps for England is a sevens record. Having oh, retired please. last year, James now finds oh, himself go, back go, in go. the thick of it as interim coach for England. Oh, tie, sir. A tie. And against New Zealand, he had his hands full. Hey, great shift, buddy. You right? An earlier defeat to Spain had left England's hopes of qualification hanging by a thread. As time expired against the Kiwis, they trailed 21-12, but all was not lost. Keep ball. They just need a five-pointer here, England. One. And through they go. And getting dangerous over the top for Burgess. Bowen, Harris out wide. Bowen holding it up for Harris. Harris up against Dixon. Harris, Harris, Harris saves the day for England. The intensity we showed that game is outstanding, yeah? We were a million miles different from that first game of the day. It's been a frustrating day in some senses, a slow start, but um, you know, the boys played really well in the last two games and uh, obviously the result in our last one wasn't exactly what we wanted, but um, it gave us a chance to go through and that's what we're here for, to get to day two and um, build on our performances. How much better does it feel to play like that, with that energy, that backing each other up, okay? That's what we want to see from an England shirt every single time, okay? I'm absolutely loving the coaching role. I'm, I'm loving uh, still being involved in, a, in an amazing program that we've got in England, and um, you know the, the ability for me to pass on some knowledge and experience to some of the younger guys coming through, and, and hopefully a little bit to the older guys as well, um, is, is amazing for me. And yeah, I'm loving every minute. So yeah, it's been good. England were through, just, and would face Fiji in the quarterfinals on Sunday. For Stepan Hans in South Africa, their place in the next round was assured before they even took the field against Ireland for the last action of Paul B. Their place guaranteed, their opponents, that was still dependent on the result. And that would come down to the last kick of the game, kind of. And it is full time, is it? Oh no, what's happened? One second left of the clock when he kicked that. Oh no, Terry Kennedy, no! Ireland. And they can potentially go top, it won't happen! It is the captain for South Africa. Have you seen a crazier finish to a game? South Africa win the pool. Their reward for doing so, a quarter-final encounter against the hosts. So for me, there's some games that you really need to have a brilliant motivational speech. You need to be on form in terms of getting the guys up. And that morning, that USA game was not one of them. Davis does well, does a 20-year-old. Lyles on the outside. Carlin, Carlin, check your internet speed. Oh, he's good. He's downloading like it's in the future. All of us knew that 
USA in USA they're going to bring the A game they're going to be fired up USA had the support they had the hop and after 5 minutes they had a 10 point lead space to operate Carl and Piles look at the distance he gets a double and home in front of family and friends we look good. We played really good, man. We had that game. We really had that game. We put on the show. And so did they. South Africa queuing up on the outside. Wistason is there. He goes against Barrett, keeps low. Let's box finally on the board just before the half closes. JC Baturis on Barrett. Cuts back in. Baturis will win this battle. They've spoiled the party in America. Crushed. I was really crushed because we fought so hard and we fought, but we didn't get a result that I felt like we deserved. Me. And in life, you don't get everything that you deserve. You know, that's just life. The USA were out. Champions in Vegas the last two years, but bested in LA by RSA on their way to a semi final clash with title rivals New Zealand. The Blitzbok had escaped with a draw against Ireland come from 10 down to narrowly beat the USA, but against the series leading Kiwis, they got it all right, winning 17 points to zip. The other semi-final would feature Australia versus who else but Fiji. The reigning series title holders were in imperious form in LA, having stuck four tries past England in the quarter-final, they put on a show against Australia scoring another seven, including perhaps the best of the weekend. Two eye, two eye back to more than a thungy, more than a thungy beats Maloof. Oh no way! How on earth has he done that? More than a thungy. Bang that one on the highlights reel. To be honest, I never expected. As you can see in the replay, as you can see my face, I was like, what the you know, it's like I never expected that. We were down to two. The final, a repeat of the game from Sydney four weeks earlier. But repeat or not, no one could have predicted quite the way this one would go. Well, you've got to think South Africa with their composure and plan. They're going to come into this knowing they've got to try and rattle the Fijians. But the Fijians' whole game plan is they don't have one, and that's what makes them so dangerous. It started really well, and we were up by, I think, 19. Yeah, I had very good, especially in the first part of that game. But I also think we made unforced errors. Sevu, more than a thang, he makes it a 12-point game. And, and once again, we put ourselves in a very difficult position. Still like Mundalata, needing support, easy. Oh no, they've done it again. Get right out of town. Fiji are rolling heavy in Los Angeles. Oh, it's dummying and cutting right through. Sylvan Davids. And still with Fiji, who are going to score through Cherry Tuai. And it looks as though this one is headed the direction of the Fijians. Hunt, dry. JC Pretorius demanding it out in front. JC Pretorius for dry. Oh boy. South Africa are in. 24 play 17. They've said we don't want the conversion. So we will have one final piece of play. What about Bracken De Pere? Comes on straight away off the bench. Timer's up. One restart and he's got to take it. Here we go. It's well waited, the restart up. They go and back it comes for South Africa. Dupria, Dupria taking on, going to the fringe. Duplessis, Duplessis holds his feet. The blitz box, Dupria goes out the back. Bronco, Dupria try. It's a try. And now there will be a conversion opportunity for the blitz box. Uh, Bronco. What were you thinking before you took that kick? Were you nervous at all? His answer to me was not at all. Dupria sends it on its way and it's good! Oh no way! Back to tight. They've 
scored 12 points inside the final minute 15. And South Africa and Bronco Dupria have forced OT. Now, now the tables have turned a little bit. First, we had to get the guys excited. Now we have to cool each other down and just say, listen, yeah, let's keep focused. Dry, off fighting well in contact. Good work across the line. They've done it. South Africa have done it. The miracle comeback is complete. Back from 19 down to grab it. In extra time, oh mama. Next time on 24 Sevens, South Africa take the title fight to Vancouver for the last event before lockdown. Our goal is to definitely go out and win the series.